Hey guys, first things first, I wanted to show you subscriptions actually working. So here I have the Android emulator on the left and the iOS emulator on the right. And now when I push any kind of uh, price on the right side or the left side, it'll update in the other person's app without doing anything. So this is me clicking on wall and you notice wall pops up over here by five. And we can do the same thing over here. So click on it, bumps up, and any of these work. So that confirms that subscriptions are correctly working. So real quick, what I wanna show you guys is how I was able to run Android and iOS at the same time. I'm gonna go ahead and close these emulators so they don't just uh, destroy my computer. So what I did is I created a host um, and I checked whether we were running iOS or Android. And if we were using iOS, I uh, set localhost, otherwise I use this IP address. That way I could access my server from Android. So this is how I would recommend doing it. Uh, that way you can have the same code run both on your iOS and Android emulator. So that's how I got that to work, just checking the operating system and that's how you can do it. Okay, and then of course I just like in my Apollo, I used host everywhere instead of using localhost. I just grab that. And that's also good for if you wanna get into production, which is actually what I wanna talk about today. So how are we gonna deploy, how would you deploy a Prisma cluster? Okay, so I wanted to show you guys how to actually deploy Prisma to a server, but I was running into a nasty little bug that uh, someone else has encountered as well and already has an issue on Prisma. It's still open, so hopefully they'll solve that. But instead of actually showing you because we're having trouble, what I want to do is kind of talk about how I would go about it. Because Prisma documentation has uh, some pretty good points, but it does it in an interesting manner that I want to talk about. So there's really two things to deploy, right? Your server and then the cluster. And the cluster includes the MySQL database and the Prisma server. And then your server is the GraphQL Yoga server you set up. And what they have guides on is how to deploy it to ZNow and Apex Up and some other places. This is where you're deploying your actual GraphQL Yoga server. Whereas over here you have how to deploy the cluster and they're deploying the cluster to DigitalOcean for example is one of them. And to me this felt a little bit odd. I don't know why you would want to deploy it to two different places uh, unless, you know, size you need to scale up and you need multiple machines to handle the load but I think for a lot of cases you can put both the server and the cluster in the same location so this is what I would recommend so after following I would follow this guide right here the digital ocean manual or the uh, anything where you're setting up your own VPS either this or with the digital ocean docker machine um, but with this one basically what you do is you install docker and node on the VPS and by the way, this would work for Vulture or Linode, any virtual machine. Um, but basically you install Docker, you install Node, and then you install Prisma. And then you start up Prisma like you would regularly do with Prisma local start. Now they talk about how to go ahead and like open Prisma up to the server uh, or like so anyone can access it. But instead what I would do is just run your Node application on here as well. So do Prisma local start. So it's, lo it's running locally on localhost. And then with your GraphQL yoga server, I would start that up as well. And they would talk to each other locally. And then I would expose the GraphQL yoga server. Um, and that's what I would recommend doing with that. So have them run on both servers uh, seems like a better choice, at least at first. So that's it for this video, guys. And this brings the... Uh, the series to a close. I'm going to do a formal conclusion tomorrow and kind of just talk about my thoughts about Prisma.